day. This is Professor Nanette D. Santos who will discuss the theorem behind the exercise 1.3 entitled The Structure of the Crystalline Solid. This comes with the two-part video whose aim is to to know the characteristic properties of a crystalline and amorphous solids, to recognize the unit cell of a crystalline solid, and to calculate the density of a solid given its unit cell. Crystalline solids have regular ordered arrays of components held together by uniform intermolecular forces, whereas the components of amorphous solids are not arranged in regular arrays. With few exemptions, the particles that compose a solid material, whether ionic, molecular, covalent, or metallic, are held in a place by strong attractive forces between them. When we discuss solids, therefore, we consider the position of the atoms, molecules, or ions, which are essentially fixed in space, rather than their motion, which are more important in liquids and gases. There are seven fundamentally different kinds of unit cells, which differ in relative lengths of the edges and the angles between them. As it was shown in the figure, we have simple cubic, tetragonal, orthorhombic, rhombohedral, monoclinic, triclinic, and hexagonal. Each unit has six sides, and each side is parallelogram. We focus primarily on the cubic unit cells, in which all sides have the same length and all angles are 90 degrees. But the concepts that we introduce also apply to substances, whose unit cells are not cubic. Polycrystalline materials are those atoms which are situated in a repeating or a periodic array over large atomic distances. That is, a long-range order exists such that upon solidification, the atoms will position themselves in a repetitive three-dimensional pattern in which each atom is bonded to its nearest neighbor atom. What you can see on this figure are the different stages for the solidification of a polycrystalline material, which starts with letter A, crystallite nuclei, then B, the growth of the crystallites, and C is the formation of the grains, and D is the microscopic view. For the packing of spheres and energy, this involves the three-dimensional structure of solids that has considered only substances in which all the components are identical. As we shall see here, such substances can be viewed as consisting of identical spheres packed together in space. The way the components are packed together produces the different unit cells. Most of the substances with structure of these types are metals. Looking at the figure, we have example of the non-dense random packing and the dense ordered packing with corresponding energy involved. And if we're going to get the correlation between the two, we can see that dense ordered packed structures tend to have lower energies, mainly because the atoms of the dense ordered packing cannot move because of the limited, limited space supplied to them. What you can see from this slide is an example of crystalline materials composed of silicon and oxygen forming silicon dioxide. As you can see, the shape are hexagonal by nature. Atoms are packed in periodic 3D arrays, and these are typical for metals, ceramics, and polymers. Whereas, if this material comes as non-crystalline, you cannot see any two shapes that are the same for the non-crystalline silicon dioxide because atoms have no periodic packing and this occurs mainly because of the complex structure and due to rapid cooling for example of ceramics that's why sometimes we term amorphous as non-crystalline so the question now is if you wish to arrange or stock the atoms to maximize the space available how will you do it Will you favor the left side arrangement or the right side arrangement? 
always consider that atoms tend to be densely packed. Reasons for dense packing are only one element is present, so all atomic radii are the same. Metallic bonding is not directional. Nearest neighbor distances tend to be small in order to lower band energy. Electron cloud shields cores from each other have the simplest crystal structure. On the next few slides, we're going to examine three structures such as the simple cubic, face-centered cubic, and the body-centered cubic. Shown here are the three types of cubic unit cells. If the cubic unit cell consists of eight components, atoms, molecules, or ions located at the corner of the, of the cube, then it is called the simple cubic. If the unit cell also contains an identical component in the center of the cube, then it is called body-centered cubic or BCC. If there are components in the center of each face in addition to those at the corners of the cube, then the unit cell is called face-centered cubic or FCC. The arrangement of the atoms in a solid that has a simple cubic unit cell was shown in the figure. Each atom in the lattice has only six nearest neighbors in an octahedral arrangement. Consequently, the simple cubic lattice is an inefficient way to pack atoms together in space because only 52% of the total space is filled by the atoms. The only element that crystallizes in a simple cubic unit cell is polonium. Simple cubic unit cells are, however, common among binary ionic compounds where each cation is surrounded by six anions and vice versa. The body-centered cubic unit cell is a more efficient way to pack spheres together and is, is much more common among pure elements. Each atom has eight nearest neighbors in the unit cell. As shown in the figure, the body-centered cubic structure is, consists of a single layer of spheres in contact with each other and aligned so that their centers are at the centers of the square. A second layer of spheres occupies the square-shaped holes above the spheres in the first layer. The third layer of spheres occupy the square holes formed by the second layer so that each lies directly above a sphere in the first layer and so forth. For the body centered, it has 68% of the volume is occupied by the atom. All the alkali metals such as barium, radium, and several of the transition metals such as chromium, tungsten, iron, tantalum, and molybdenum are examples of body-centered cubic structure with coordination number of 8, meaning it has 8 nearest neighbor. Okay. And uh, 8, so this is the center, so you have 8. Okay. Then 1 at the center and the 8 corners, that gives us the number of atoms per unit cell. Face-centered cubic refers to crystal structure consisting of an atom at each cube corner. So this is the corner. And an atom in the face of each cube face. So this is the face. It is close-packed plane in which on each face of the cube atoms are assumed to touch along the face diagonal. And these are the particular example of having FCC or face-centered uh, structure. The aluminum, the copper, the gold, the lead, the nickel, the platinum, and the silver. With coordination of number of 12, meaning it has 12 nearest neighbor. Meaning 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then 12. Okay? And for the number of atoms per unit cell, you consider the sixth phase, 1, 2, 3, then 4, the bottom, 5 on this side, and at the back you have 6. 6 phase times 1 half plus the 8 corners of the cube, then you'll have 4 atoms per unit cell. 
this slide only show the corner atom which are shared by eight then the eight and then the edge center atom which are shared by four unit cell and a face centered atom shared by two unit cells this slide tells us the summary of the number of atoms per unit cell on a simple cubic which is equivalent to one on a body centered cubic which is equivalent to two atoms per unit cell, and for a face-centered cubic, which is equivalent to four unit cell. The relation between the atomic radius and length of a unit cell edge must be determined by looking through the diagonal of the cube. The diagonal contains one radius from each corner, plus the diameter of the central atom, totaling to four radii. From geometry, the diagonal is also equal to the square root of 3 times A. The length of one side relates to the atomic radius as follows. A is equal to 4R over square root of 3. So for a simple cubic, how we calculated A is just equal to 2 times the radius. Whereas, what we discussed a while ago, that is for the body-centered cubic, which A is equal to 4R over square root of 3. And for a face-centered a is just equal to the square root of 8 times R. This figure tells us the level of atomic arrangement in materials. For letter A, it's the inert monoatomic gases have no regular ordering of atoms. B and C, some materials including water vapor, nitrogen gas, amorphous silicon, and silicate glass have short range order. And for letter D, metal alloys, many of which are ceramics and some are polymers, have regular ordering of atoms per ions that extends through the material. And to summarize the first part of the BG lecture for crystalline solid structure, a crystalline solid can be represented by its unit cell. The smallest identical unit that when stacked together produces the characteristic three-dimensional structure. Solids are characterized by an extended three-dimensional arrangement of atoms, ions, or molecules in which the components are generally locked into their positions. A face-centered cubic, or FCC, unit cell contains a component in the center at it, of each face in addition to those at the corners of the cube. It fills only 74% of the available space. Simple cubic and BCC arrangement fill only 52% and 68% of the available space with atoms, respectively. That ends the first part of the video lecture, and thank you for listening.